Hello everyone, this is Ultimate Academy's team presenting Onyx Financial Track. This is the 20th lecture and we're still going through all the inventory transactions. We'll pick up where we left off, so let's open up the screen, request assemble items. This screen adds requests to uh, basically assemble a couple of items together and create a compound item. The screen also does not affect the inventory accounts or the stock itself because we're simply just placing a request. We can use this screen in two different ways. But uh, let's first just note that we have the tab additional data and that one is just for any additional information that you would like to add. Let's get that out of our way and move on. Import from Excel is in case you would like to retrieve the data you will use to create your request to assemble the items from an Excel sheet. Now let's discuss master details. This tab can be used in two ways, either by entering the data in the upper section. Uh, the data is basically the branch making the request, request number and date. You don't have to worry about those two. Uh, type is in case you've added types for this kind of requests from the uh, request type screen. The four fields that we just talked about are all mandatory and also warehouse number is mandatory as well, uh, which means you cannot proceed with your request unless you fill those in. Of course, the, the warehouse that we're talking about here uh, is the one which contains the items that we want to compose the compound items from. Description and reference number are optional. Cost center, here you will find the cost centers that are linked to the warehouse that we've chosen for this transaction. Then we will fill in the table below by uh, selecting or specifying the items that we're using to assemble the compound items. What will this compound item consist of? In item code, you will hit F9 and select the item from the item list. The name and measurement unit are both automatic. Then in quantity, we will determine the quantity needed uh, from the selected items to create the compound item. Description and that's it. The second way to use the screen is uh, using install from, but still you will need to actually enter the mandatory fields that we've mentioned, which are branch, request number, date, type, and warehouse number. In install from, uh, we'll select if we're retrieving the information through a sales invoice or sales order. In request number under that field, we'll enter the document number, either the sales invoice reference number or the sales order reference number. Press enter and the system will do the rest and it will fill in the table. Inactive means that we're stopping this transaction and process uh, means that this transaction is ongoing and used. Approval status, since this is a request, we will need to approve it so we can use it in the assemble and disassemble compound item screen. So we will click on approval. A window comes up where we can change the status of this request to approved. Next screen, and that will be assembling compound items. This screen actually has a uh, direct impact on the stock items. Through the screen, we carry out the actual process of putting together the compound items. This creates an effect on the items that we're using to create those compound items, and these items will be in debit. As for the resulted compound item, that will be in credit. In credit means that the quantity available for this item has increased, and debit is, of course, the opposite. To use the screen, click on Add. Then you will select a branch, then the assemble order number and the date will be filled in automatically. From warehouse to warehouse, the warehouse we're getting the items from and the warehouse where we will store these compound items. Reference number and description, optional fields. You will select the cost, the cost center by pressing F9 and choosing the right one from the list. After you select it, you will see the name of that cost center. There is an icon on the far right called Expenses. When we click on it, it will bring up a window where we can determine the expenses we want to add as, uh, as cost in the process of assembling the compound item, like for example, packaging, uh, packaging expenses. 
We can of course choose the currency and add a cost center and after we add all the relevant information we click on prepare costing so the system would calculate the expenses properly. Okay so then uh, in the table we will select the items we are using to create the compound items while specifying the quantity. The system will give you the cost, expenses, net cost and total. All of that of course is based on the information that we've provided. The second way to use the screen is using install from which contains four options. Request of a simple kit item uh, that is request for assembling compound item uh, which we choose uh, basically if we'll need to uh, enter the request number then we will hit F9 in this field which will bring up a list of approved requests so we're basically referencing a request to create that compound item then there is employee number here we can enter the number of the employee responsible for this transaction we can also add expenses for um, for this way of creating the compound item. However, we will need to specify the warehouse from and to. Next screen is the exact same but the opposite transaction. It is for dissembling the compound items. There is a difference in one field, uh, stock transfer price. Here we will uh, determine the value of the separate items after we've disassembled the compound item. Next screen that will be external repair order. Here we're sending or let's say outsourcing broken items for repair. What happens is when we extract them from stock for repair it does not count as shortage. To use the screen you will click on add, select the branch, order number and date are automatic, warehouse from the drop down menu that is uh, by the way the warehouse we're taking these items from. So. Uh, these fields are mandatory by the way. As for reference number and description, well they're self-explanatory. Then we will record the data of course uh, for the items that were taken out for repair in the exact quantities and also we need to mention the reason we're repairing them all in the table. We also specify the exit date, return date and the cost. That's everything for this screen moving on to the next one. Alright, so now we have consignment receiving. This screen carries out the transaction of receiving consignment into a warehouse. And uh, of course this transaction does not affect our actual stock or the accounts. It's just a regulatory process. Click on add, branch, document number, date, customer code, uh, account number, warehouse currency and exchange currency. All of those are mandatory fields and of course by now we all know how exactly to enter the data on the system. It's either a drop down menu or you will head F9 in the field um, and select the right choice from the list. The rest of the fields in this screen are optional. When it comes to invoice number, uh, that is the number of the sales invoice that we sold these items with. This means that the items in this invoice belong to the customer that we've selected. However, that customer didn't take it, so now it's consignment. In other words, we do not own it. Next screen, uh, it's going to be consignment outgoing. Alright, so it is the exact same everything except that this is the opposite transaction. Next screen is expiry outgoing order. All right, so we're going to consider this a post-production service. We're fixing broken items inside the company itself, so we're not outsourcing to anyone, which means that it's coming out of the warehouse, but it is still within the facility. That's basically everything related to the transactions. Uh, let's take a look at the reports. We'll take the first screen as an example because... Uh, the way you read or review the reports is going to be similar between all of the report screens, but we will just take one example to clarify. All right, so group details report. In the header, we have show header, uh, shown or not shown. If it's shown, uh, we'll bring up how the report is going to look like. 
All right, so here uh, we will be able to see main data like the name of the branch, telephone number, fax number, PO box number, basically just all the data that the user had entered as header uh, for the reports. If we change the setting to not shown, we'll also bring up how it's going to look like. All right, so all of the data that we just mentioned is going to disappear. All right, so as for print interface uh, screen, which will give you a preview before printing and print will print out a hard copy right away copies number that is how many copies do you need language either Arabic or English print form uh, we have seven different forms that you can choose from if you would like to add a report title which will appear as the name of the report you can add it here you can also add a report footer if you would like we can review the uh, reports according to our choice by selecting, for example, to review the reports of all the main stock groups or even specific main stock groups. We can select that by pressing F9 and from group and to group. You'll use the same exact way to select subgroups or sub subgroups, similar or assistant or detailed groups. Based on the data that you specify uh, in these fields, you will be able to create a report and we can also change the name of the report. So we have a field called uh, from report name. Uh, we have six choices that we can choose from. As for the report type, it is either a summary or a detailed report. And to bring up the report, you will click on this icon. In case we uh, reviewed the report in certain settings and we want to clear these settings or clear all fields we'll click on this icon clear previous options all right so the rules that we have just established here are applicable for all the rest of the report screen uh, that's everything we have for this lecture thank you guys for watching please do not forget to subscribe and we will see you again soon